Hi, Rob Howard here again for EFL Talks, Talks for Teachers, and I'm here with a very dear friend, Marina Gonzalez. And Marina's coming to us from Argentina. I had the pleasure of meeting this wonderful person in Equitiso. We met earlier this year, and we've been besties ever since. And she's going to talk to us today about complexity theory. And this is something that's really interesting and relatively new. And I think this is perfect. So, Marina, it's your first DFL talk. Thanks so much for doing this. Thanks to you, Rob. It's my pleasure and really enthusiastic about doing it. Nice. Great. So. I'll let you take it away without further ado, okay? All right, okay, there we go then. Okay. okay. Well, hi. So, uh, welcome everybody. All right, and the, the idea for my short talk is to tell you about complexity theory for EFL teachers and why we should think about it, okay? So, to get started, I think that, as we always do, we think that an image is worth a million words. And I wanted you to start with this typical, or what used to be a typical landscape of, of London, all right? Um, we used to talk about St. Paul's Cathedral as a, a very important item. And it used to be when I was a child. Uh, but this year when I went there, I just got this particular image. And I wanted you to see it so that you could, we could share what, what we talk about when we talk about complexity. Can you see that? There is not one line in specific that we have a number of buildings that are even stronger or more or newer and uh, that call our attention even more than what traditionally uh, we, used to, we, we used to look at. And there are a number of cranes, all right? So there are things being built there. So when you see this skyline, you can see that there are a number of elements into play, and that if you only isolate the one that you traditionally wanted to focus on, you're missing a whole part of the story, okay? And this is what complexity in our field tries to, to bring, a deeper understanding. So this, I would like to show you. Um, a common definition, all right, of uh, complexity theory by a common dictionary source, all right, which is the study of complex and chaotic systems and how order, pattern, and structure can arise from them, okay? The big, um, most important thing in terms of complexity is that what it allows us is to bring order from what seems to be chaotic, okay? And of course, we teach. Um, so when we talk about, when we read this um, it, definition, we can see um, the idea of pattern and structure. These are elements that are common for us. But when we talk about chaotic things, then th that is a, a little bit far. So the point is, why should we be interested in it? Okay, and again, another picture. Um, if we look at this guy, who's a student of mine, all right, whom I love a lot, uh, and if you don't know him, you could say that my classes are boring, for example, or that he doesn't understand any English, or that he's interested in a, some other things. But the point is that, as the text says, Many times what happens in our classrooms cannot be described if we don't consider a complex situation. For example, this particular image, okay? Uh, in this moment, right, the, there have been, the, the, this boy was taking part in an, out in, in an activity where they had to move to an, another building. He was, he had a, a lot of, um, it was very cold outside, so he had lots of clothes, and inside it was very hot. And of course, he's a, a child, so he's all the time moving. And when the time 
came, I mean, as, as time passed, he started feeling drowsy, right? And, it, uh, and eventually, he fell asleep because the, uh, the activity took like two, or, two hours, all right? Now, I need to have a complete reading of what who he is because otherwise I would run the risk of being prejudiced as regards the child. And isn't that one of the biggest challenges that we have in our classes? That we need to have a real, uh, a real grasp on reality and a real grasp of, on our students when we teach them. So, going more into, into detail, what is complexity? Complexity is not a synonym to complicated. It is because something complicated consists of a set of separate parts, okay, that can be isolated and put back together. And I'm sorry, I can see back with a, without a C. Sorry. Uh, now, as I told you in the case of my students, can I separate into parts this idea of uh, code, length of activity, and uh, and warm in, in the inside, it's impossible. That is a complex situation because it is a whole that results from the interconnection among the, the different parts. And that is what we live in our class. Okay? So, and what is it useful for? Okay? It is useful to understand and reflect on our reality. If we saw reality from a non-complex perspective, we would see the image on the right. And on, on the left, okay, a bundle of things without any um, logic, etc. But if we look at it from the the complex perspective, we can see what is available or what is visible on the picture on the right. That is, there are patterns, there is an organization, and that produces some sort of balance. And this is what we should be able to read. And this is what can help us to understand the difficult and complex classes that we have. So, going strictly into uh, examples in teaching. How would we include complexity in our teaching? Well, if we think about complexity as regards what we do as teachers, our role, okay, not only understanding the situation around us, but what we do, for example, we use a linear attitude when teaching, mostly when we teach opposite pairs, okay? I mean, we are all the time talking about expanding students' vocabulary, etc. But what happens? We teach right is the opposite of left. But we could go further and include a complex perspective, including the idea of associated ideas such as right, left, wrong, appropriate, acceptable, so-so, in the center or in the middle, and how these relate to the concept of right and left and the different layers, okay? So as, as you see, we are interconnecting things, helping people connect things, and not true, false, right, wrong, which are the biggest challenges that we have in our discourse, okay? And going a little bit further into this, let me show this through an example. Uh, of two teachers' vignettes, okay? That is a typical staff room comment, the right? A teacher saying, I've done all I could with this child. Luckily, he's no longer my student, but nobody does anything. This is a very typical thing in my, in, in my classes. Not my classes, but my, my, my school, all right? And another thing, another one that comes together with it is this one about how long will I keep on teaching color, all right? And I put them both together because the point is that they express weaknesses in the thinking of the teacher that com a complexity reading of teaching would allow them to solve. That is, both are centralized. They don't think of what happens beyond their classes. They just think about themselves. There is a lack of perspective in the, le in the learning process. Uh, and mostly from a children's developmental perspective, because truly, in the life of a child, colors are almost everything. And of course, this person is just self-referential. And these two phrases only take us to uh, the burnout syndrome. When you don't see the organization, 
the, the general system as a whole, then you overburden yourself and you think that everything that happens is the only your sole responsibility and then burnout is um, more feasible to happen. Okay? So this has been a very, very brief introduction to the concept of, of complexity, which is absolutely wonderful. And I want to leave you today with these suggestions if you happen to be interested in the in the topic. Okay? Basically, uh, Diane Larson Freeman's and Lynn Cameron's foundational work in terms of complexity. And of course, Sarah Mercer's uh, contributions uh, that, that are, she's constantly producing more and more chapters and articles together with Akilia Takusula's and uh, um, a number of, uh, of other people in, in the field, okay? So thanks for, for being here with me when, in whatever time and moment that you happen to be able to watch this. And I'm here for if, in case you want to contact me. So goodbye, and it's been a pleasure. Hope to see, re see you or read you around soon. Bye-bye. Uh, thanks so much. That was one as, as always. And I'm really glad that you could do this. This is uh, something very interesting, and I hope uh, even some of our older teachers can take a look and learn from this.